this guy or gal is not happy with me. See how she strikes. I'm trying to do fake strikes at the camera. Some milk snake. Well, when you got a bunch of wood chips, one thing you're definitely going to get is milk snakes. This one was hiding under and I was digging out some wood chips, plant some stuff, and it was right there under the wood chips, which is great. I love milk snakes. So hopefully we see more of them this season. Okay, so another uh, mommy and baby situation Ed has alerted us to. There is a little nest in the grass and with baby birds. So let's see if we can see it without disturbing them too much. Oh, oh my goodness. Are they not the most adorable things? It's kind of a crazy spot. I think they're sleeping. Look how cute. So one of the things that I like to do every year is make our own liquid fertilizers. Um, and comfrey is one of my best herbs for doing that. Uh, this is almost done blooming, so we're just going to cut this off and we're going to chop it up and drop it into this bucket here. <clears throat> and you can add the grass, add whatever else. The important part is you're adding this vegetable powder. Comfrey is super important. It contains a lot of potassium. Sorry, that's bad. Uh, it contains lots of potassium and nutrients, and it's got really deep roots, so it helps bring up minerals from below. And that's great to feed your plants with. We'll do use this as a foliar feed, but first, this has got to go about four months, at, not four months, four weeks, and we'll let this uh, steep and turn uh, into a solution. So, one of the other things that we have in abundance as a natural plant, this is burdock. Burdock also has roots that go way deep down into the ground. They pull up a bunch of nutrients. And burdock is as good as comfrey. You just keep chopping it up. You see I've got one big burdock plant here. I've got another big burdock plant here. I'm just going to go through. I'm going to chop down all these leaves. I'm going to pack them into this bucket. And we're going to add some water to it and we're going to let it just steep for four weeks, six weeks, something like that. As these grow up, because these will grow up again, we'll get a number of flushes of leaves through the season on these and the comfrey. I can keep making these fertilizer buckets. And even in the winter, I could store them in the garage if I needed to, to get a jump start for spring. But I just keep making these, making this great fertilizer water. I use like a cup or a half cup per um, watering can and go and just water my plants with it. It gives them a nitrogen boost. I don't have to buy anything. We're just being self-sufficient with what we've got on the land. So what we're doing here is we're adding the water. This will allow this to ferment down into the type of solution that we want. Um, we collect rainwater. That's what we use extensively. We don't have well water or city water to water our plants. So it's either the rain comes or we collect it and we use the rainwater. These are small for our needs. We're going to be, I don't know if you can see over there, we've got a bunch of IBC totes. 
we're going to be going and using those pretty soon. In a couple weeks, we're going to redesign how we capture the rainwater, and we're going to be collecting a lot more. But in the meantime, these little barrels work, and it's important to go and just fill this up all the way with water. If you can come take a look at it, Maya. Um, you can see I filled this mostly full with leaves, right? So these are gonna rot down. I'm gonna put this lid that is over there on it loosely. It's gonna be solid a little bit, but it's also gonna be loose because we want the gases to escape. We don't want it to build up and pop or have some sort of weird methane event. So this is going to be an anaerobic fermentation. It's going to be pretty stinky when we're done, but that's okay. Plants love stinky things and uh, it should feed our plants going forward into summer. I'm going to continue to build these. I've got a number of these buckets. We're going to put them here. They're going to be mostly in the shade and right here next to this rain barrel. I can refill them if need be and we'll be making our own fertilizer. And I think that is an awesome way to reduce inputs. Here we have a little tomato basil Guild. We're doing them in these grow pots for this year. Got a couple other things. These are Raku or Raku onions. Not sure the pronunciation on that. Um, but I went through here, planted in a bunch of basils. Those will help attract pollinators. Cleared out a bunch of early tomatillos. I want these plants to set root instead of growing tomatillos. And I've got a bunch of the mugwort here. We're gonna add this as a chop and drop into these plants. Potatoes are doing wonderful. We're likely to get a good harvest off these potatoes. And yeah, so just keep trucking in the garden. Welcome friends. So today we're going to harvest a bunch of garlic scapes and we'll probably make these into a garlic scape pesto. Um, garlic scapes are the fruiting bodies of garlic when you're growing it, especially hard neck garlic. You rarely get it on soft neck garlic. We have soft neck over here. We have hard neck garlics over here. And it's basically the flower head that comes up from the garlic. Um, so they're really easy to harvest. We've got a ton of it. By going in and harvesting this, we just pick it right off. And they make these little cool curly loops, which is neat. Um, but by harvesting this, we'll actually get larger garlic bulbs. And that's what we want want larger bulbs to store. So we planted these last fall and <clears throat> not as many of them came up as I wanted but as we've mentioned before in previous video this is actually a huge runoff from the driveway. It's good to observe <laughs> as you're doing things. This is our first year Next year, I think I'll put them up in a raised bed or something like that, and uh, so they don't get washed out. But we have just a ton of these scapes, as you can see. This is going to make a lot of pesto. We're going to probably use a bit fresh, and then we will go and freeze the rest. So here we're chopping up our garlic scapes. We're gonna make these into a pesto. And we just need to chop these roughly. And we're not really following much of a recipe. We kinda 
just put these in with some olive oil and some walnuts and some lemons and some, some par yeah some parmesan cheese and we'll uh do it to taste all right so now we're gonna add our chopped up scapes to our food processor and add in a little bit of olive oil <laughs> and toss in some of our walnuts. And we hear Luna in the background. She's not happy. She wants to eat the scapes. We're going to just give this a quick initial time. And then we're going to process all of this and add more olive oil as needed or add more walnuts and, and we'll cheese. see. And we'll add some cheese. Okay, so we're getting ready. We've made our uh, garlic scape pesto, and now we want to preserve what we've made because we've made quite a bit. And I want to talk about um, freezing it because we've done this before with basil pesto, and it's really delicious and it freezes really well. And in the past, I've used plastic bags, but I'm really trying to get away from using as many plastic bags as I can. So, and I have successfully frozen food in ball jars. So if you look here on a ball jar, it may not show up um, on camera very well, but it says for freezing. There's a fill line that says for freezing. So you can freeze in ball jars, but what you need to make sure of, and this is important so these don't crack, is that the jar is straight up and down. This It's a straight neck jar. Any kind of a curve runs the possibility of breaking, but because we want this in smaller portions, we're going to freeze it in this uh, straight-necked uh, half pint. So all you just need to do is just fill your jar as best you can. And then we're not, or as how much you, you know want there, but you do want to leave a little bit of headroom because like all things that freeze, this will expand. Um, a little bit and um, the other thing that I want to talk about too is you can use your metal lids this is an, a metal lid from a previous canning project so I wouldn't reuse this to can but we can use this um, on our our jar for freezing purposes so we just clear this off our preservation method is freezing put this on and then with our band that's ready to go and they stack really nice in the freezer too. So this can be, you know, a tapenade for an appetizer. You can put this on a pizza. You can make the, you know, pesto pasta. It, the possibilities are endless. And if you need more, you can open and defrost more than one jar. Well, here it is, the fruits of our labor. So we have produced three pints of our garlic scape pesto. We're super excited. It's super delicious. We made it to taste, adding a little bit of salt, maybe a little bit more olive oil, some cheese, and Ed went out and got some uh, basil. We added that too. We made it to taste that how we like it. And you can do that the same for yourself. So this is the first harvest of our garlics. It's the scapes. And then later we will get our garlic cloves. So I hope you learned something uh, about food preservation, what you can eat from the garden, all organic, all healthy, local, like as in super local. And uh, thank you so much. Please remember to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.